my fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. We will defend our freedom. We will bring freedom to others. And we will prevail. I was in high school back then. <laughs> What's going on over there? Man down, man down. All right. Today is the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War. And all over the networks, you hear, what did we learn? The media likes to say, no more Vietnams. But when there's a war, it's always a Vietnam to them. It's the David Goliath narrative they can't shake. But the problem with Iraq, we won. It wasn't pretty, and you can question the cost, definitely. But we won, and the media is miffed. Yes, I'm ready for the lecture about how immoral the war was and how you knew that WMDs were a lie and it was really about oil and enriching the defense industry and how, unlike every other major policymaker in the world, you didn't fall for it. Thanks, Neville. I guess it's just better to dither on the throne and wish things were different. But I'll take this victory in Iraq over humiliation in Benghazi any day. And remember, nearly everyone thought there were WMDs, a notion Saddam let lie. How different was that suspicion, really, from the current concerns in Iran? As for the Iraqi people, the WMD was Hussein himself. Why we left him there in 91, who the hell knows? I just heard someone say the war was a blot on our combat history. Hell no. The surge showed that when you decide to win, you win. I don't need an American-hating media to clang their navel-gazing bell especially when things actually turned out better. This anniversary is for the troops and those who benefited from their bravery. Honor those lost, and for those alive, shake their hands, tell them great job, because it was. A.T., do you think the world is better off without Saddam Hussein? I do. I do think he was a madman uh, that needed to be taken out because the evidence we had at the time showed that he was a threat. That is my view on how we should intervene in these other countries. Um, I think that there's a belief that when the U.S. military takes action, uh, we have an obligation to do more than just destroy the regime that's threatening us. Mm -hmm. um, we've always had this since the Marshall Plan, right? Yeah. Um, we did it in Europe. However, I think that, Greg, this is very, very different. And I think that when we have an enemy, we go in, we take them out. No insurgency, no morale building, no democracy promotion. I think we're dealing with a very different society. I didn't see Paul Revere on a horse in Tahir Square. And um, I think we lost a lot of blood and treasure unnecessarily after we could have taken him out and gotten the heck well, out. Bob, isn't that the story what was 91? I mean, if, if that was always going to be the mistake. I well, think. It, it, you know, was a we lot left of him there, who, and we we tr let down the Kurds, and we let down the Iraqis. Yeah, but the, but there's a lot of arguments about that. You know, Colin Powell said to George H. W. Bush, "If you're going to go up that highway, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to take control of this country, and we were not prepared to do that. Didn't have the people to do it. We're not prepared to do it. I think it was the right thing. I think Bush made the right call. Mm -hmm. But and the other thing we got to keep in mind here is when you talk about the media, let's remember that most of the media, mainstream media that you keep talking about here." Uh, we were behind the war in Iraq when it started. Uh, in fact, we were, they were embedded uh, uh, reporters and all these different troops. Fair point. With these troops. But, uh, but over that was time, for transparency. Huh? That wasn't to get them behind the war. That was so that they could. No, no, but, but what I'm war. saying is when they got there, they, they, there was a lot of. There were very few people who were against the war in the press, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. uh, right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Now, yep. it changed as time went along. The issue, as far as I'm concerned, is I was opposed to the war at the beginning, and I'm opposed to it now. And the reason are many, I won't get into the, just the deaths and the, and the people who were wounded, but I think the rising of Iran uh, is the single biggest fallout of this. And Saddam Hussein, whatever you thought about him, never would have allowed Iran to have a nuclear weapon. What do you think? But I, th I think it could be looked at that way or from the other way, which is if Saddam Hussein, who had used chemical weapons in the past, who had... Uh, designs and plans to make a nuclear weapon that the that the arms race would actually be much more intense right now if he if he were in power and that the Mideast would be even more unstable than it is today. What do you think about the intel playing a role in this? I went back and read President Bush's uh, chapter on this today and I it was interesting because the, there's a paragraph where he describes when they found out that the information that the CIA had provided was wrong, mm -hmm. that he decided right then and there he was never going to blame them, but he was going to try to find out how they could make it, prevent it from happening again. And that's how they got the nonpartisan Chuck Robb Commission. 
and i think that the country is better off for it interestingly on the seventeen u n resolutions that were in front of they were questioning saddam hussein on the last resolution it was a vote of fifteen to zero in the national security council russia china and syria all voted with us so it wasn't as if it was a republican idea it was the world thought you can't get you can't that kind of you can't get that you can't get that cooperation now eric what do you think well, let's let's talk about what happened. Let's remember that Saddam Hussein aligned his troops. He he, he took the border of Kuwait, and he was going to go into Kuwait. So it's not like this big speculation whether he's a bad guy or not. He was a bad, bad guy. guy. Then right. we he went did in, go into Kuwait. We, we, no, he didn't go into Kuwait. He lined him up, and then we went and did Desert Storm and stopped him. He let the Kuwaiti oil fields on fire, but he didn't ever actually go into Kuwait to try and take the, the country down. He never got there. He decided to light the oil fields on fire. The point being, we had to take Saddam Hussein out. We had just been punched in the face with 9-11. The, Iraq, the Afghanistan war was starting up. We had to do what we did. I think it was the smartest thing George Bush did. He restored confidence in America. Can I make one other point? We have a tease. Um, Gaddafi, six days after Saddam Hussein was captured in the spider hole by U.S. troops, uh, Gaddafi gave up his chemical and nuclear weapons plan publicly. I, 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 I hate willingly. to correct you, but yes. he really did get it to Kuwait. Don't you remember the stories about dumping babies out of incubators and all that? No, you Bob. Can't what be happened was he, they had him on the border, and the oil fields were on the border. He was going to take the oil fields first. He couldn't take them, so he lit them on fire. Okay, we, need, we need Schwarzkopf's map. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a great guy that was. Boy, well, that, those were... Those are the days. But those are the wrong. days, all right. You're, you're, you're wrong on that. But you remember the guy went with him, though, the, 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 yeah. the guy with the helmet? Uh, who was that guy? Uh, oh, the, the pr spokesman? The, the Kuwaiti, the Kuwaiti uh, uh, guy with the big tank helmet. looked like Patton. I can't remember. Interesting guy. All right.